In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with Amen. your spirit. My brothers and sisters, here at our parish this weekend, we're celebrating our parish feast day, Our Lady of Victory. So we'll have special readings in honor of the Blessed Virgin and also prayers to reflect that particular Mass. So as we enter into this sacred celebration, honoring our God and our Blessed Mother, let us first call to mind our sins and ask that Jesus meet us in our deepest needs. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call all sinners back to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up into heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, 
together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is His name. He has mercy on those who fear Him in every generation. the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, How much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In order for the encounter between the angel Gabriel and the Blessed Virgin Mary to be written in St. Luke's Gospel, it first had to be told by Mary to someone. So whether she shared it with family members, maybe even Jesus himself, or maybe later on the apostles, because we know that she was with the apostles after Jesus was ascended into heaven. But whatever the case was, we know that she had to share this encounter. And therefore, the words we hear in today's Gospels, today's Gospel, are intimate and personal. Ones that undoubtedly Mary attributed to herself. So when she said she was greatly troubled, that was the state she was in. And I highlight this reality because I think sometimes when we approach our Blessed Mother, we think because of the Immaculate Conception, she didn't experience the ups and downs of life. On the contrary, she did. In fact, maybe because she did not experience sin in the same way we did, maybe she actually experienced the world in a much harsher way. Because sometimes our sin dulls us to the reality of life. In fact, many times don't we use our sins to actually escape the pain, the sorrow, and frustration of this world? So our Blessed Mother knew what it was like to live in this difficult and hard world. So when we go to her for her intercession, when we ask her to intercede to her son on our behalf, we have a very special intercessor someone who knows what we've been through and therefore can truly ask her son for what we need. So this is why we can approach the Blessed Virgin Mary with so much confidence and so much trust. But also I think one of the realities is the more we approach the Blessed Virgin Mary, the more we ask for her intercession, the more we come to model her because her faithfulness is truly unmatched. She is the model of faith. As she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. 
So her initial moments of being the mother of God truly reflected a deep faith and a willingness to accept whatever God would provide to her throughout her life. So we can think about the other events of Mary's life. For example, when she fled with St. Joseph into Egypt to save her son, she had to think, may it be done according to your will. When she couldn't find her son Jesus in the caravan as they were leaving Jerusalem, and when they returned to Jerusalem and could not find him, may it be done according to your will. Or again, thinking of her standing before the cross and agonizing over the death of her son, she displayed faithfulness. May it be done according to your word. So her faithfulness, her deep faith that God would provide for her is something that we need to model in our own lives because that is the means through which we can truly navigate the ups and downs of this world. And truly, brothers and sisters, if we don't have faith, how could we navigate the world? How could we get out of bed in the morning? How could we understand tragedies? And how could we deal with the difficulties that constantly befall us? And that's why I'm very honored to be at Our Lady of Victory. 59 years ago, when our parish was formed, our parish chose the name Our Lady of Victory to acknowledge that the Blessed Virgin Mary models faithfulness but also she is Our Lady who shows forth the victory of her son, Jesus Christ. Because she is a model of discipleship, because she truly had deep abiding faith, she always participated in the victory of her son, Jesus Christ, which he won on the cross. And that was our second reading for this weekend. Jesus undid what Adam brought into the world. So again, that victory of Jesus Christ is one that if we cling to his death and resurrection and we proclaim it always with our lips, not only will it deepen our faith, but we, like the Blessed Virgin Mary, can move through the ups and downs of life and truly not be weighed down by whatever we experience. But I will have to say that being Our Lady of Victory can be difficult sometimes as we look out in the world. Because again, we of faith know the victory is won. And we know that our Blessed Mother models that victory for us. But not everyone believes that. And truthfully, Maybe you don't believe that right now in your own life. But I think this feast day in this particular way is an invitation for all of us to renew our faith in the victory of Jesus Christ, to ask for Mary's intercession, but also to know that she models faithfulness that you and I can bring into our own lives. Because again, sometimes we need to be reminded that it is not about perfection in our lives that brings forth faith. It's more about our commitment to growing in faith, to living it out even if it's imperfect, and making sure that we know what we are about. The victory of Jesus Christ, the intercession of St. Mary and all of the saints but also the knowledge that we truly have grace upon grace, especially in the sacraments we receive. So Mary chose to share her encounter with St. Gabriel so that we could see that she truly was a woman of deep faith who navigated her life in that faith. So let us, on our parish feast day, do the same.
so that we can truly build up this parish and live in the deep and abiding faith that only comes through Jesus Christ. Together, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God for whom all things are possible, let us offer these our prayers. For the church, may the Lord continue to bless her and protect her from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all nations and peoples, may the peace of Christ turn all swords into plowshares, resulting in healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For all who bear financial responsibility for family, may God's providence free them from any anxiety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the trust needed to answer Christ's call to come follow me, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For anyone in our faith community living through a time of strife, may the Holy Spirit bring peace and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that Our Lady of Victory will help us obtain the grace of sharing in Christ's victory and hers forever in the life that knows no ending. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the benefactors of this Mass, all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in our book of prayer, and for our own intentions, We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Gracious God, please hear the prayers we offer to you and trust that you will fulfill all our needs. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father of the Almighty. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightly conformed to these offerings we bring, and so honor the mysteries of your only begotten Son as to be made worthy of his promises, who lives and reigns forever. And up. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds and exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to the earth's ends, you have done great things, and you extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember also, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelian, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so it may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal cup, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be At this time, you can make your spiritual communion.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we proclaim in this sacrament the death and resurrection of your Son, so being made partakers in his suffering, we may also merit a share in his consolation and in his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This weekend is our next Ignite Sunday, Sunday, October 10th. So please join us if you're able in the parish dinner, parish center for dinner and discussion on the topic of why does God let bad things happen. Dinner starts again at 535, and if you don't want to come for dinner, come about 610, 615 for that discussion. Our Christmas Carol Bazaar is just four weeks away. All parishioners are asked to pick up their envelopes with raffle tickets at the ladies' council table in the gathering space. Or if you have any questions about the raffle, please just don't hesitate to call the parish office. We missed all of you in 2020, and we look forward to seeing you on November 6th and 7th for our largest parish fundraiser. With that, I hope everyone has a blessed week. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to the Cozy Corner. Today's topic is screening for depression. Depression is the most common psychiatric disorder seen by primary care physicians, affecting approximately 350 million people of all ages. But few patients discuss symptoms directly with their doctors. Instead, they present with symptoms such as headache, backache, chronic pain, making the detection of depression more difficult. In the absence of screening, about 50% are identified. Unless directly asked, 
patients omit information about depression symptoms for a variety of reasons, including that depression falls outside the scope of primary care physicians, belief that depression is not a real illness, but a personal flaw, fear of stigmatization, concerns about medications prescribed and being referred to a psychiatrist. Untreated depression is associated with a decrease quality of life, increased risk of suicide, and poor outcomes when it occurs with other medical conditions. Symptomatic screening carries the potential for substantial benefits. Depression also imposes a significant economic burden accounting for billions of dollars annually. Depression effects extend beyond the individual to employers, spouses, and children. In adolescence, depression can result in long-term comorbidities such as general anxiety and panic disorders and lead to risky of behaviors such as substance abuse. Adolescent onset depression increases the risk of suicide five-fold. 15 to 24-year-olds who commit suicide have a history of depression. It is the third leading cause of death for this age group. Perinatal depression occurs during pregnancy and the first 12 months after birth and is common affecting both women and families. Women with untreated depression are at risk for postpartum depression, suicide, delivering premature infants, and low birth weight infants. Postpartum depression hinders caregiving and infant attachment. Patient outcomes improve when there is collaboration between primary care providers, case management, and mental health specialists to screen for depression, monitor symptoms, provide treatment, and refer to a specialist as needed. The treatment for depression is a three-pronged approach. Number one, depression medication. Number two, working with a therapist. And number three, lifestyle changes. Thank you for your attention and stay safe until we meet again at the Cozy Corner. Thank you.